I'll start the YouTube. Mel, what's the matter? Just come off the Bushy Road stream. I've had a lot of news for Lyrical Master, along with the in game news for the Super Deck on Vanguard Zero, so we're going to cover them both in this video. See where we go. Starting off with the Lyrical Monastario stuff, we've had the five arts for the Lyrical Super Rev, Secret Res, and we've also had the base art for the Sick Line, along with the seven card Lyrical SP pack. So they've also given us a little bit of information to what each of the rival arts do, so we're going to discuss them, I'll give my opinions on them, and see what we do. Right, first one. We've got Heartfelt Song Lauren Errol. Uh, Lauren Errol's theme is singing songs and triggering various kinds of skills. So this one to me seems more like it's going to be a uh, combo up technical decks, so like the Magnolia stuff where you can do certain things by doing certain skills at certain times, so it looks to be interesting. The second one we've got is Prismatica Wallista. Wallista's theme is battling with two different kinds of precious stone cards. So this to me seems to be orders like the author stuff, so they're going to be two set orders, if you've got the two set orders, you can do certain skills. But it seems interesting, but honestly, I want to see how they change it from the author stuff because just changing it between having tokens and not needing tokens isn't enough, really, for me. Third one we've got is Ernest Correct, the leader Clarissa. Clarissa's theme is by battling by gathering five friends together. So, this would be your old school Gold Paladin, Royal Paladin style of uniting together and attacking at one, as one force. And here we've got the fourth one, Rondo of Eventide Moon, Felty Rosa. Felty Rosa's ride theme is about attacking with your summons with fellow ghosts. So this, to me, leads more to it's going to be vampire, drop zone base, resurrecting, like your brown blue styles. So it'll be interesting to see what I do with that. And the fifth line we've got here is Archangel Twin Wings of Estil. This is our new ride line that we haven't seen so far. We've got up the top here, we've got our beautiful basic art, and then to the side of her, We've got the new LSP art, LSR, and her ride theme is about changing abilities, that, different abilities that change depending on the grade of cards in the buying zone. Key bit they, to note here, they didn't say who's buying zone. So they could be looking at the Narakami style of finding your opponent's rear guards and getting different skills based on what you've found, what you've not found. Or they could go the V Gear Chronicle way of Mystery Flare Dragon and depending on what you've found, what you've not found from your drop zone hand, that you get different skills. Interesting to see where they go, but obviously we can't do much more until they actually give some more news. And then to finish up, we have the LSP illustrations. We have now come back around and it's the same six weeks in from the first reveal on the trial decks. It is the Aestis six line of Kyrie, Kiora, Kanami, Neon, Misa, and Nanami. But in that pack, they've also got the mysterious twins, Romy and Rumia. This art, which is the clamp style, will be in the pack as ORR as well as in this S LSP pack. So obviously it will have different full passes between the two. No idea whether it's going to be SP in the set or not. But the arts for the six Aces' cards are exclusive to the LSP pack. And the theme for the Aces' deck is going to be returning rearguards to hand and calling them again. So it's your old style of Bermuda's of bouncing stuff, calling it back down, comboing off, basing and getting different skills based on what you've bounced, what you've not bounced. So it's nice to see the old style of Bermuda has come back to the full circle to the game again. But that's it for the Lyrical Mastara news. We're now going to move over to the other screen where we'll cover the Zero news. And we're back. As you can see, we're now on Vanguard Zero, so we're going to cover the Super Decks and discuss their contents. So we're going to the section here and this one. Scroll down. Now, as you can see here, there are three achievements to do, and the fourth one gives you the super, uh, super deck coin. If you are a new player, as of the first of June, you get a super deck coin for free, so you actually touch two of the super decks. The missions are: the first one is complete two char uh, ten character fights, get a pack. The second one is get ten thousand VP to get a pack, and the third one is full ten packs on any of the gutchers. Now, 10,000 VP isn't hard to do if you're doing 10 character fights and 10 packs. They give us 20 packs normally for the beginning of a set, so that this is going to be very easy to finish. Once you've done all three of those achievements, the fourth one then unlocks and you get your super deck coin. Now, onto the super decks themselves. We'll go use the Royal Paladin one to start off with as an example. As you can see from the Royal Paladin deck one here, you get six triple res, you get eight double 
rares, you get four PGs, and we worked out, I think it was 12 rares? Let me just double check, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yep, 12 rares, and the rest are commons. There are no starters, so that we're not getting the SP starters like you used to do with the ones you could buy. So we're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to discuss all the triple rares and double rares in each deck and say how good, how bad they are, and at the end I'm going to actually suggest what I would start to pick as a beginning player, and if you've got some experience, what to pick as well. So to start off with Royal Paladins, you're getting a Jewel Knight deck here. You've got two Ashley Reverse, two Salome, and two Gancelots. Gancelots, I'm not too sure what they want to do, because obviously there is a lot of upheaval because people aren't happy with Garnt's and Light Seekers at the moment, but they've obviously not taken a stance on it as of yet, so we don't know how that's going to go. Ashley Reverse and Salome are key staple cards in the Dual Knight deck, so they're very good cards. Then Double Rares, you've got two Blaster Blades, you've got two Shellys, and you have got four copies of Julia. Now, to upgrade a Dual Knight deck, you're look, obviously looking at getting four or more of the Break Ride Ashley, and you're also looking into getting Miran Miranda. The issue with Miranda is, though, it then it eliminates the, the usefulness of Blaster Blade and Garnsel, so they then become dead cards in the deck. So, not a, as, as staples as a whole, they've given you good cards, but to fully develop the deck, they've given you two weighted Triple R's, two weighted Double R's. Then, going further down, we've got the Battle Sisters. Now for double rares here, we've got two Cocodes, two Macarons, and four Monikers. And triple rares, you get two Cocos, you get two Silent Times, and two Fromages. All in all, this is a very solid deck. Cockart, I'm still very much not a fan of, because it, it doesn't combo well with the plan of the deck. They also do set these up with ideal trigger setups for their opinions, so you can change them as obviously you want. But these are mainly designed for a beginner to pick this up and be able to play straight away on the ladder with it. But place it at Monica is really good. Fromage, staple. Tom, it's going to be an OTT sale for a long time. Coco, obviously with the Arata, you've got, you've only got. Unfortunately, you've only got two chocolates because they do split two old style PGs and two new style PGs where you've got where the clans have got them obviously if they've only got one or the other you get those ones but this is a nice easy deck to carry on upgrading because you only need two fromages two macarons two more chocolates one more cookie uh one more cocoa sorry and then a place of cookies for the heels so honestly it's a very cheap deck to upgrade from this Next we have Shadow Paladins, and this honestly is one of the best you could ask, best ones you could ask for. Because it gives you for double rares, two, two Dorinks, four Muckers, and two Diamonds. And triples are two Blast Light Rangers, two Mordred Phantoms, and two Raging Form Dragons. This is a really good thing because you got the range of Raging Form Dragon Abyss. Not Raging Form Dragon, Phantom Blast Dragon Abyss. That's just been got announced for the new set coming at the 1st of June. So obviously more Avenger support. You've got the key bits of Mordred, Raging Form, Blast Dark. Just you literally just need two more of each of those, two more Dorans, and this deck's been playable. Going on further down, you have got good old Liberators. Here you've got double rares of Balan, Barthol, and Holy Chandra. Triple rares, they give you Blast Blade Liberator, Zenith, and Garmor. Uh, Gar so out of this, you need obviously more Balans, you need more Blaster Blade Liberators, more Zeniths, more Garmors, and you then need to also find four Break Ride Garnslots. So this one does take an obviously Star Range Trump, so you do need to put a lot more effort into this one. But overall, it's not a bad starting point for a Gold Paladin deck. Then next on this, we have got Angel Feathers. Angel Feathers, your double rares are Narel, Sariel, and... Ramiel, and then triple rares, you've got Ramiel reverse, you got Danielle, and you've got Zarakiel. So, at this point, it's not amazing because Hamira's, one of the key staples of Angel is missing. You've got Nociel's that you could have to pick up. Damage add, they put damage adds in the deck, and they're not amazing because you don't really want them. This one, not too too bad I'd say but you require so much more to be added into it it's not a good beginning start point especially the fact that if you've got Zerakiel that is very heavy on you need one on field one in damage zone and they only give 
Sanctuary 2 in our face. And then to finish off a United Sanctuary, we have got Genesis. This one is like one of the, what well, I was talking about earlier, you've got, only got one style of PG, so you get the guaranteed four of the one style. But the double rows, you've got Melissa, you have got uh, Valencia, got the Brimwood Callaway, and you've got two of the 10k grade three, the games of crit on a limit break. So honestly, double rows aren't amazing. For triple rows, you get two Minervas, you get two Angelicas, you get two Hamrails. They picked the three best triplers for the night for the clan. They could have honestly not bothered with the grade three and done two more Melissa's slash Valencia's or drop the Callaways for them, but it's their choice. Damage adders I'm not overly fond of as well in this deck, but can't do much about it. They've given really good triplers. Calgaro is becoming an interesting one, more the fact that it's controversial for the fact of the triple res. Double res, they've given you really good ones in Stricken, Velocosity, and Nouvelle Critic. The triple res, the reason I'm not impressed with it is they've given Dauntless Drive Dragon Reverse. You've kind of got the good side of Nouvelle and Dauntless Drive Dragon, so really good parts there, but you could have done Face Dragonic Overlord for the two tri triple res there, and people would have been more happy, honestly. Then going to Narakami, unfortunately the, the Eradicates they've picked as themselves are very much out of date at this point, they really aren't that useful. But they've given four Sweet Hands, two of the 12k attacker and two Saucer Wyverns. And then for triples you've got two Gauntlets, two Bowing Swords and two Descendants. Honestly, the key parts that actually set the same grace of this deck is the two Desert Gunners and the two Rising Phoenixes. The rest of it is just massively outdated, unfortunately, because everyone's in the Brawler phase now. And then Blouse. We have got Double Rares, four Mars, two Sterns, two Yamatama Drakes. And Triples, you've got Galaxy, you've got Mon, and you've got Ethics Buster. Whilst I really like the fact that they've sucked Ethic Busters in here as a nice way to restand when you ride Galaxy on top of it to give you more multi attacks. The bit I'm not too overly fond of is the fact that four Mars is really isn't that necessary. They could have easily made that four Stern Blair Blue and made a really solid deck out of this. Also, the fact of four Grade One Blau Blugas, but only two Grade Two. Also, Blau Junga is the Grade One, and they only include two normal Grade Two Blau Blugas. That's something I'll have changed as well, but. Can't do much about it. DP. Honestly, one of the better ones that got supported. Because they're double rares, they give you a play set of Shadow Kaisers, which is really good for setting up your plays. Two Die Barretts and two Die Braves. And triple rares, they're giving you two Laurels, which is a long time staple for Dimension Police. And then two Die Kaiser, two Great Die Kaiser. So you've got literally your way to search your Die Kaiser, way to search your Great Die Kaiser. You've got mass combos here. It's a very solid deck for a beginner. Then going down, we have Chaos Breaker, which, honestly, my my opinion, is literally the best of the start decks. Because you're getting four PGs, you're getting two Palladiums, two Chaos Breakers, and two Break Riders as your triples. And then doubles, you're getting two Colony Makers, two 10k Attackers, two Mobius Breaths, and two of the on-place Count Blast 2 Lock 1 when you're at Limit Break. Outside of that, you literally need to pick up Nebula Lords, finish off play sets of your triples, and Colony Maker and 12k attacker, maybe increase a couple of numbers of each of those, and you're good to go. It's a very solid beginnings deck here. Then going further down, we are now into Dark States. We have Dark Irregulars, and it's got literally one of the worst triple rares they could have picked. They gave us Ragey. But double rares first, we've got two copies of Gwyn the Ripper, we've got two copies of Dimension Creeper, and we've got four copies of Amon. Amon, very good card for them to introduce, because but it's, it's a bit of a weird one. Because obviously we've got Astroth, it's Amon's Legion coming in the next set, so people are obviously speculating that we're going to get three Amons for the Astroth, so the four Amons could be dead cards at that point. And then obviously triple rares, you've got Amon Reverse, really good, Chariot, really good, and then Ragey. Ragey is just not worth it in this point. 
key notes though, we have got the grade one, grade two Ammon engine for soul charging, which is really nice for them to add. They've added two bikes as well. They've given a really nice base for this deck. I do like outside of the Rages. Then the one that disappointed me the most, Pale Moon. Obviously, as everyone knows, the Iron Mara Sheik nerf starts from the 1st of June. So instead of actually giving people a good Silverthorn deck to work with, they give us this mess. Double res, our Egg Juggler, which is bad. Not Metal Carol, which is bad. And Silent Meditator Farah, which is bad. And they set Farah as the heel. When it's the key card of the deck. The E Persona Blast. So yeah, but the triples, the triples, they've picked three really good ones. They've picked Purple Trapezist, they've picked Dreamy Fortress, and they've picked Miracle Pop Ever. Three really good triple rares. Honestly though, I'd have rather have seen, if they wanted to go for the Melody Pop Faro route, I wouldn't have done uh, Dream, Dreamy Fortress. I'd have actually gone Nightmare Doll Alice. Because two Dreamy Fortresses doesn't do anything for the deck. Then we're on to the Mega Lanika stuff now. We're on to duos. Duos for their double rares get four copies of Peace, they get two copies of their 12k attacker, and their last double rare, if I've played the game, spot the double rares now. Oh, is their two duos twin successful, which is a alright card, I said. But your triple rares, you've got really good profits in the fact that you've got two rounds, two rates, and two mirrors. Beautiful. You really can't ask for a better deck. Obviously, it would have been nice if they'd have done the two duo, P four duo PGs, but obviously they want to vary with. At least you've got the options of old style versus new style. Then up force, up force doubles. You've got two wheel assaults. You've got three basils, and you've got three algos. Yeah, not bad ones. Algos is a bit of a questionable one, but they haven't got many other double options they could have done. Because obviously you're trying to promote the multiple attacks, and there are no other double rares really that promote the multiple attacks. Triple rares though, you've got Maelstrom Reverse, really solid card. You've got Glory Maelstrom. Literally one of the best cards you could ask for in Art Force and Diamantes. Personally, what you could have done with the deck is you could have gone for the Trans Glory play and obviously not use Maelstrom Reverse instead use Trans Core Dragon. But honestly, still a really good list. Then, last one on the list is Great Nature. Great Nature hit the stonks for the fact that they're double rares and the fact that they're giving you four copies of Duckville for free. Then you've got two Lab Camels, eh. No, it's literally the first card you'll cut, but then you've also got the four chickens on, two chickens on top. Honestly, could have done two duckbills, four chickens, and actually done real stonks, because obviously chicken will get the uh, set out, but either way, both are good. Triple rares, four Chatnoir, two Chatnoirs, beautiful. Two Polaris, really good card. Two Leopolds, I kind of wish it was the uh, Leopold first, sorry. I kind of wish it was the base one. But both work, it gives you your multi attacks, it really is nice for great nature. Yep, and that was the last one. Uh, that's it for the zero, so we'll move back over to the other side now. Welcome back, that was the end of the zero news. But if you want to discuss a bit more about all the Lyrical Mastaria stuff, like what the skills you think the skills are going to do with the super decks, what your opinions on them are, how good you think they are, how good, bad do you think they are, and just generic chat, please do leave a comment. I do try to respond as fast as I can. And if you'd like to like and subscribe, it very much helps the channel. But as for that, that will be the end of this video. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.